Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Vangelis, and as Generations is receiving a lion-wide gimmick in 2015's Combiner Wars sub-branding, I thought it'd be worth going over some of those broad-spectrum ideas right off the bat, instead of retreading them in individual reviews. I'm doing all of this in the context of Wave 1, which is the only stuff available as of this recording. Combiner Wars packaging is the sexiest Transformers packaging I have seen in years. Giant globs of character art taking up the majority of the cards, and a quick inversion of the Age of Extinction debuted brand logo in a dignified wartime combination of red and black. These look good, man. My only big negative is that, thanks to Crasis of Pre-Order 66, I've noticed that the cards use lower resolution art that's been blown up to the point of pixelation. Thanks for ruining my life, Crasis. The cooler aspect of the packaging is the layered cross-sell stuff. I mean, yeah, they're all advertising weird kludgy combos of four Autobots and drag strip for Wave 1, but there are bands of color that specifically denote the Aerial Bots and the Stunticons. The three Deluxes and Silver Bolt all have a gold band and a Superion numeration on their boxes. Powerglide even gets one on his little card. The other Legends have red bands, which appears to mean no specific team alignment, but... Optimus Prime has a blue one, making me wonder if there are going to be blue banded deluxes specifically for his Ultra Prime torso mode somewhere down the line. These toys have all got their own merits, but share one critical piece of engineering, the Combiner Wars Combiner Connection. Now, on the limbs, it's just a big square peg. It ratchets out, thank goodness, but otherwise just has to sit there and enter a cavity. The torsos are where all the really interesting stuff happens. They've got ports, but the connection does not involve ramming the shaft into the hole. You slide the peg down into the port through one of the four walls of the cavity, attaching it to a guiding friction rail while a spring-loaded trapdoor shifts up and down. The trapdoor doesn't enclose the peg, but presses down upon it while just cresting over the edge of the top of the peg. This connection, at a glance, looks like it should easily slide apart, but it is remarkably solid. It holds tight through regular articulation, yet comes apart with ease if the very specific and natural disengagement pressure is applied. Also, the pegs on a spring-loaded rotational ratchet that works in tandem with the swing-out deployment ratchet to offer some great articulation at the shoulders and knees of a given combiner. All the limbs so far come with a personalized, double-barreled hand-foot gun. The core of these accessories all work the same, and it works surprisingly well for something stuffed into a deluxe price point alongside a fully featured deluxe. The gun modes are a little bulbous and weak, but the foot mode is really solid, especially given how small these things look down there. It's very much thanks to the tight yet bendable heel piece, whose swing range helps poses that could really use an ankle tilt. It helps, but doesn't replace that mythical joint. That keystone heel piece also becomes the thumb of the accessory's hand mode, which also kind of works out alright. The hands are stuck in one semi-curled pose, but thanks to the additional fold and the position of the ambidextrously positionable thumb, it looks a whole lot like a hand. And thank goodness, in order to hold guns, the peg hole that a gun's handle would go in is not inside the weird little folded cavity of fingers and thumbs. There's just a peg hole up there where the plastic is solid but still looks good holding some kind of giant firearm. I'll be talking more about the individual figures sometime in the future, but I really wanted to collect my thoughts on this stuff here before I say anything else. The combiner gimmick of the Combiner Wars figures works. It feels good. The combination pegs and ports are solid and clever. The combiner hands and feet are entirely adequate and surprisingly involved for the price point they're crammed into. The core, basic, central keynote of the next year's worth of Generations toys works. It works as of Wave 1. I'm so glad and so excited. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and I hope you guys don't mind that I wanted to lay this all out up front instead of restating and repeating it in a diminishing tone of excitement over the course of five or six reviews. I also hope you guys don't mind just how ridiculously hung up I am on figuring out a number dash letter review number scheme for those Combiner Wars figures. Like, who's gonna be dash A? Who's, who's gonna be dash R? And repaints are gonna use bits and pieces of the other ones, maybe? I don't know. And those little gun legends, where do they fit in? These are the problems of a grown man who collects toys living in an apartment in a very well-off first world country.